Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi and one of those little USB CAN bus adapters to look at CAN bus messages directly from the Tesla. So let's go. Now often you'd have an OBD2 connector like this with a CAN bus on pins 6 and 14, but the Tesla's actually got at least four CAN buses, so this is not what I'll be using, not directly anyway. So I'll show you where it is in the car. Right, so down here you can see where this little storage space is. I've got my subwoofer control here, but you know, fucking subs. Anyway, this just pops down if you push, push it down. So do that, push it down. Now I've got to keep one relatively here because that sub control is still connected. But up under here is the CAN bus connector and also the network connector, but that's another video. So I've got these here, that's actually Ethernet over there. I won't be using that for this. And it's got this connector here. So this is the CAN bus connector and it has four CAN buses on it. Okay, I got this Tesla CAN bus cable from somewhere online and even though it does have the four CAN bus pairs on this end, only three of them go to this end, but I'm going to, going to be using one anyway, which is the standard pins on 6 and 14. Okay, so on this dodgy diagram here where Gary probably means grey, you can see pin 6 and 14 are the standard CAN pins, which is what I'm going to be using, but it also has these vendor pins and there's an extra two CAN buses go to those on this particular cable, but they could have put all three on there as well, the three others other than the main one, but they didn't. But anyway, I'm just going to use pins 6 and 14 for, the, for that CAN bus of the Tesla. Okay, so what I've done is got the plug that I'll be plugging into it, and got pin 6 and 14 and the power. And the power goes to this 12 to 5 volt converter, which then powers the Raspberry Pi Zero, which will be on the Wi-Fi network. And then I've got this little on-the-go cable to the CAN bus adapter. Now I've taken the jumper off for the 120 ohms and I'll show you why. Now I've got one here with the jumper connected, so if I just measure resistance between CAN high and CAN low, you'll see it'll come up to 120 ohms, like that. Now you only need, well you would only have this resistor at each end of the bus, so only a maximum of two. If I go connecting that onto the bus, I'll bring the resistance down. So with two 120 ohm resistors, one at each end, the total impedance is 60 ohms, but if I put that in there, then we've got three in parallel, so that would bring it down to 40, which means the things driving it would be driving into a, a lower resistance load, so they'd be driven too hard. So we don't want that. So what I'll do is take that off, which makes it a high impedance input here, which is what I want. So you see that's essentially open 31 mega ohms. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, so I've got my little Raspberry Pi unit there, and my little dodgy cable, which is supposed to be less than 30 centimeters, but it's longer. Anyway, it's what I've got. So now I'm going to plug that in and it'll grab the 12 volts off that, power that up, it'll join my Wi-Fi network and then I'll take it from there. Okay, so I've got that sitting there and I'm just going to plug it in to the plug. And there we go. So that'll be booting up and it'll be on the network soon. Okay, now I'm back at the desk and I'm going to be doing the rest from in here. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use that USB device over the network as though it's plugged in directly here. Now I did a video on how to do that a while back called USB over IP, so check that out if you want to know how that works. But basically that's what I'll be doing. I'll just be accessing it over the network and doing all the setup and, and everything here so I can use the programs here in the comfort of this computer. Okay, so here I am on the desktop. And the first thing I want to do is do USB IP and list what's available on that remote machine. So 1.2.10.32. And you can see that it's there. Now I've already set it up on the startup scripts on that Raspberry Pi, that's why it's presenting it there. So I need to attach that here. So USB IP attach remote 102.168.10.32 and the bus ID, as you can see there, is 1-1. So now I'm going to do LSUSB. I now have a CAN adapter as though it's plugged in right here. Which means if I do IP link, you can see CAN zeros there. Now I've got to set that up, which I'll do right now. So I'll do IP link set dev can zero type can bitrate 500,000 then IP link set dev can zero up okay so now it's up what I can do now is things like TCP dump on can zero and you see can messages now I can do that in Wireshark as well obviously so just start up Wireshark and see there's a can adapter there and you see all this shit there Simple as that. Now that's good and well, but what I'm actually going to use is a program called SavvyCan, which comes as an app image, so it's easy to run. And here it is. You can see all this stuff coming in. I've got the car on the charge at the moment, by the way. You can run Sniffer on here. Man, oh, wrong window. Wrong screen. You can see all sorts of stuff. 
So what you got there is IDs and the messages. And green means it's incrementing in value and red means it's decrementing in value. Now there's a lot of stuff there, but I'm gonna focus on just one of them. So I'm gonna look at 102, which is apparently the pack voltage. So that's it there. Now the way this works, again, I don't know who found this out, but the way this works for that ID, the first two bytes in this order, that one first, represent the, the voltage. So I'll just whip up a calculator here and go from hex. So looking at this, it's that it's byte number one, then byte number zero. So 8E and then let's say CF. So 8E CF and divide it by 100 because they're 0 0.01 volt increment. And you can see that the battery pack voltage is 365.59 volts. So that's the info straight off the CAN bus. We can go a little further than that. So what I want to do is make a database for all these. Now I obviously don't know what all these these are, just that 102. Okay, so a lot of stuff there. What I want to do is just look at ID 102. So I'll just select none and then 102. So what I need to do is make a database file. So I'll make one here, I'll edit that and edit some stuff. So the node name I'll call battery voltage and it can just be called battery voltage as well. I don't really care. And within that, I need to make a new message. So let's have a look at that. So we know the frame ID is 102 in hex. That's what the 0x at the start means. And we'll just call the message name uh, battery. So it's coming from the battery. Now the text, I'll just set, I don't know, light blue on a black background. Yeah, something like that. Uh, the frame length will be 16, I suppose. Now the new signal is the actual value. So this is where it gets fun. So voltage is what I'm going to call it. And the voltage, as we said, was represented by these two these two bytes here in, in backwards order. So there's a little box for that. Now the bit length is 16. And oh, it's starting... Where am I going? It's starting here. So... Uh, unsigned integer, because that's what it is. The scale, that's how much it's multiplied by, which is 0 0.01 volts. No offset there. Min value is 65535. Just put 2 to the power of 16. And the unit name is volts. And we're talking battery voltage here. So that's that there. That's good. That should do. Should do the trick there. Okay, now if I interpret frames, I've messed up my colors here. You can see they're behind there, but not really well. So I'm just going to fix that up. Hang on a sec. Fuck it, I'll piss that one off. That's just a default one to make a new one. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, text color. Make it, I don't know, white. There you go. You can see it. Just keep it simple. All right. So you can see now, I have it decoded. It says here voltage, 365 volts. So that's pretty good. I can now read values directly, and you can see it changing a little bit. But we can go a step further than that and make a graph. So I can go up here and make a new graphing window and set one up. So I will add a new graph. And for that, I'll just call it uh, battery volts. I, I'm using the message as battery, using signal voltage. Copy those signal parameters, and that'll put it all in here and add this graph. Boom, there we go. So that's, I've got, as I said, it's plugged in charging at the moment, so you can see it's slowly creeping up. I mean, this is, not much difference between top and bottom here. But if I let that go over time, you can really see it. For instance, here's one I had going earlier. Earlier on the charge, you can see it's about 360, but you can see the trend obviously is charging up. And that's all from CAN bus messages. So that was about 360, what was that, half an hour, an hour ago? I don't know when. And now it's at 365, so you can see it's creeping up there. But anyway, that's plucking the data live from the CAN bus. Now, as I said, there's a lot more messages in here. I mean, there's lots more. You look at how fast they come through. It's just flat out. So, you know, I don't know how the hell someone figured out that those two bytes for that ID were the battery voltage. And there they are up, up there. But anyway, there's a lot to figure out, and that's just one of the CAN buses out of four. So anyway, it'll be doable, but uh, <laughs> I've got to start right from the start with the BYD. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you that because I found it interesting, and maybe someone else will. 
Okay, so that was looking at the Tesla CAN bus via a Raspberry Pi over the network to the computer here. Now, I don't know how they found those original values. I mean, you could have done some by trial and error, but some of them are quite tricky to figure out, I would imagine. But anyway, I'm going to try and do something similar with the BYD when I get it. But that'll do for now. I wanted to share that with you and just show you a bit of what messages float around on the CAN bus. Anyway, that's all. Till next time, take it easy.